Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Hope Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And wasn't it great to hear Donna on the organ? My goodness. Yeah. 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 So kind of a foretaste of uh, what we'll hear uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. But we're going to start with Les's announcements. Good morning, church. Good, good morning. morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is certainly good. And we had a great big uh, Sleep in Heavenly Peace bed build last week. Uh, last weekend on Saturday, we had about 20 people came to do the sanding. And then on Sunday, we actually assembled the beds. And we had some of our youth come, and they were there both days doing sanding and also helping us get the beds assembled on Sunday. Um, here, Jimmy does more than just play music, just so you good folks know. He was there helping out, and we did 40 beds on Sunday which we have a great need for. Uh, right now we have a waiting list of about 90 families that are waiting for beds, so we're building up our inventory, and then as soon as it's safe, we'll be delivering beds again in this area. And uh, this is all the different stations that we had during our bed build right here in the parking lot at, uh, at Hope Church. And then last week, uh, Wednesday night, we had our second ice session, okay, we played volleyball in the fellowship hall, had a great turnout, had 14 kids come in. Um, Eight of the 14 kids were on the volleyball team at school, so they put on a real clinic, okay? These kids were really good um, playing volleyball on Wednesday night. So um, our next ice session is going to be October 14th. It's our big uh, pumpkin carving uh, event. It's always a lot of fun for the kids to get their own pumpkin. We'll have them on display in Fellowship Hall for people to vote on. We're also going to have them online for people to vote on. And the kids can always win some really nice uh, gift certificates for their pumpkin carving. Service opportunity this week, Thursday, again, we're going to be at Feed My People. We had a dozen people last week, Thursday. Um, now we've been doing the kids' meals bag, and again, the folks did 316 bags on Thursday morning between uh, 10 and noon. And it's always safe. We do the mask. We try and stay social distancing, and they have lots of jobs for us, always a lot of work for us to do, and they really appreciate everybody coming. So again, if uh, you'd like to be a part of this, just try and give me a call before Thursday at 9 so we can give them some numbers of how many people will be there on Thursday. Okay. And Al, Al was with us again. Al has been under the weather a little bit with his health, but sure good to see Al back in service again, and I know he really enjoys being with all the people on Thursdays. And then coming up, and the tickets are going good, folks, okay? Mm -hmm. And we've got a big sign outside the church now, too, so we're luring in all the people around the neighborhood, but our grilled pork chop dinner, mm -hmm. okay, is coming up in uh, October 22nd and the tickets are 10 bucks and we get a really nice grilled pork loin and bacon wrapped turkey bites cheesy hash brown potatoes and that's what I've been telling people is the corn and apple sauce is from the good seniors last year that came and uh, and processed all the corn and apples for us and all the money from this folks is going to go towards bringing down the mortgage loan and this is put on by the harvest uh, supper people okay and it'll be just a drive through there won't be anybody being able to sit at church so You'll come, put your money in a plastic bag, you'll get uh, your dinners in a bag and take off and we'll have a real nice setup here at church for you. And then college boxes, next week, Sunday, October 11th, we're gonna be having our college boxes out on display in Fellowship Hall for you to pick, out, pick up. So if there's anybody out there that has a youth that's in college or tech school that doesn't live at home, please try and get us their, uh, their address, their college ad address this week so we can include them next week Sunday and when you come to church again you'll be able to pick up a box and we'll have all the goodies in there what you should bring and you'll have a week to bring it back and we as a church will mail them out and next week Thursday our encounter service continues and we're going to be talking about contentment about how we should be happy with what we have and not keep uh, you know we have a lot of these big storage barns all over now and they're really filling up I think we're going to talk about contentment on October 8th thank you it is a beautiful sunny day here in Eau Claire. Uh, first day I saw frost on the roofs, but anyway, kind of get to a point where you're kind of glad that everything's dying off. So uh, anyway, uh, we will have drive up communion 10 to 11 o'clock. Come in on the Eddie Lane side and drive around and Les and I will meet you there. Uh, next Sunday will be our first time to uh, offer worship in our sanctuary at the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, we are requiring everyone to wear a mask when you come, and uh, we will also be streaming that service so you can still view it on Facebook at home. Um, and uh, we will still be having drive-up communion to follow. So anyway, um, 
it's nice to start that again. And um, we, we have a plan on how to make sure to keep everyone safe. Uh, we've run it a few times for some weddings. And uh, we're, we're a good way to keep everyone clean and safe. All right. Uh, we still, if, if you can help with ushering or, or greeting, we, we're getting a nice list, but we can always use some more. So just uh, let us know if you're able to help with that. There is a rummage sale that's going to be going on. Uh, Lita Say Montoya is organizing it, and um, the proceeds from the rummage sale will uh, fund some scholarships for Latin American students attending the University of Wisconsin in Eau Claire. It's going to be at Emanuel Lutheran Church on Friday, October 9th, and Saturday, October 10th, so this coming weekend. And uh, if you have any items for drop-off, you can get them at Emmanuel, kind of like between 8 and 9 in the morning, and drop them off there. So, finally, uh, we, we thank all of you who have been faithful in your giving. Uh, it helps us to keep our ministry here going. Uh, whether there's a pandemic or not, we're still doing the Lord's work here. So thank you to all of you. And those are our announcements. We begin as we always begin our worship with our mission statement. As God's people, abounding in hope and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we invite all to share in the unfolding experience of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to live in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, All Creatures Worship God Most High. Um, the words to this hymn were written by uh, St. Francis of Assisi, and today is October 4th, which is the feast day of St. Francis. So that's why we're singing this hymn this morning.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and challenges. Give us hope in the face of the obstacles and disappointments that come our way, that trusting in your constant love and mercy, we may see your way of salvation and grace in all circumstances. Amen.
first reading for this Sunday is Psalm 91. Hear the word of the Lord. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample under your foot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the third chapter. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Uh, Today we were going to have a mission moment uh, that that was going to be shared to us by Brianna Winsand, but the Winsands have had a very sick child this week, and that has taken precedence over doing other things. Uh, So anyway, uh, we will reschedule that for in the next couple of weeks. But now we'll continue on with the sermon. Friends, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Give us today our daily bread. This petition of the Lord's Prayer is laden in hope. We lift up our prayer to God, already knowing that God gives daily bread to all people, even without our prayers. But praying for our daily bread helps us to perceive and internalize God's steady faithfulness. So when we do receive our daily bread, We do so with thanks. Our daily bread. 
War always seems to bring many orphans with it. World War II was no exception. Repeated bombing raids across Europe left thousands of children orphaned and displaced. They experienced traumas no child should endure. By the time they made their way to refugee camps, many of these children had suffered so deeply that they simply could not sleep at night. Even though they now were sheltered and fed, the traumas had left a mark on them. It was hard for them to let go at night and allow sleep to overtake them. They feared that the next morning they'd be homeless again and without any food. Nothing seemed to reassure them that they were now safe. Their deep trauma and fears would not allow them to sleep. Finally, someone tried another tack. When they were tucked into bed, each orphan child was given a piece of bread and holding that bread in their hands. At last, they could fall asleep in peace. That bread assured them that tomorrow they would eat again. The bread was their hope. Tomorrow, they would have a home. Tomorrow, they would not go hungry. Tomorrow, someone would take care of them. The bread was hope. Our fall stewardship emphasis this year is faithful, hopeful, loving. And today, we focus on the hope component, hopeful generosity. Hope grounds us in promise. And that promise opens up a future. Hope is future-oriented. It gives us a tomorrow budding with potential. And because we're secure about tomorrow, we can live freely and abundantly today. This morning, we heard the words from Psalm 91. The psalmist addresses what it's like to live in the shelter of the Most High. God will be there with us through all things. The psalmist can rest securely knowing that God is his refuge and fortress. He details all of the possible sources of threat in the psalm, terror by night, arrows by day. Two times he mentions pestilence, and that's something we're very familiar with these days with COVID-19. There are enemies we can see and the very real dangers we cannot see. In all of these situations, the psalmist takes comfort that God is his protector. He describes the image of a mother eagle spreading her powerful wings over her young. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. You know, eagle cams today, we can capture the protective attention that eagles give to their young. And in our northern Wisconsin climate, they lay their eggs while there's still deep snow. The eagles protect their eggs and their young by covering them with their bodies. The psalmist didn't have eagle cams, but he was aware of the tremendous lengths eagles went to in caring for their young. And that's the image he uses to describe God's sheltering love. Hope isn't mere wishful thinking. Hope is grounded in something very real and very secure. Because we believe in the assurance of this very certain presence, we can look forward in confidence. What is our anchorage? There are many things we can rely on. Our first instinct is to look within our own resources. We admire the self-made individual, the rags to riches person, the person who has nothing but digs down deep and finds a strength from within. That's a person we look up to. Self-reliance, personal strength, those are qualities that we admire. In our reading today from Philippians, St. Paul tells a very similar story about himself. Paul had it made in spades. Religiously, he was a Hebrew among Hebrews. He lived a blameless life. He'd risen in the ranks of Pharisees. If anyone had scaled the peak of righteousness, it was Paul. 
At one time, Paul had derived a great deal of confidence in all of these things, and it caused him to look down his nose at others. He'd become so zealous in his thinking and his personal rightness that he'd actually become something of a holy terrorist. He sought out and persecuted the new Christians. Paul was like the religious police. But you know his story. The one who sought out the Christians became pursued by Christ. The risen Lord Jesus came to Paul not in rage and hatred, but in love and grace. Paul came to see a power beyond himself, a source of strength and love grounded in the divine. In his experience, Paul came to a shocking new conclusion. All his self-reliance had been fruitless. As he tells the Philippians, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. This was Paul's anchorage. It was grounded in a source outside of himself. He anchored himself in Christ. Hope is about anchorage. I remember a sermon illustration my father once gave, and while he was going through college, my father worked summers at the local uh, garage in his hometown, and he'd have to go out for runs with his tow truck once in a while, and he said that a tow truck is only capable of pulling its own weight. If something should weigh more than the truck, then it's beyond the truck's capacity to inf or an influence to pull it out. However, if you apply a ground brace on the tow truck, suddenly that truck has way more power anchored to the ground. The winch on the truck can pull far more than the truck's own weight. The scope of its strength has increased tremendously. That's what Paul and the psalmist both came to realize about their strength in God. Left to our own devices, our power is limited to our own finite strength. But when our anchorage is fixed on God, now we suddenly have a power far beyond our own limits. Within our own power, there are many things we're capable of. We might be able to get by for a time by our own mind and strength. But there are too many times to count when we are up against obstacles way bigger than we are. These things sap our strength. They make us weak in the knees. They wake us up in the middle of the night as we fret over their magnitude. Quarrels with a spouse. Conflict at work. Concern over a child who's being bullied at school. Worry over mounting expenses. Loneliness. A disturbing medical diagnosis. Global warming. Where, oh where, is the piece of bread that will help us sleep through the night? These problems are bigger than we are. What we need is anchorage in something greater than ourselves, a source of power greater than the scope of our troubles. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, As we agonize and strive against these mighty foes, these forces greater than we are, very quietly, a feeling may come over us. In spite of the troubles gripping us, a quiet spirit of calm makes its presence known. And it's like there's an invisible pair of hands underneath us. And we feel their support. Something greater than we are upholds us through the trials. And we know 
that we are upheld by the mighty hands of God. And no matter what happens, no matter how the series of life's events will unroll, we know that through all things, God is with us. And if God is with us, then all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. This is the hope that does not disappoint us. In that hope, because of that hope, we're able to sleep through the night. And when we awake in the morning, we're able to face the new day, not with fear, not with dread, but with the confidence that God will make a way. That hope allows us to live in the abundance of God's promise. No longer do we have to grasp and cling to yesterday's crust of dry bread. For the fresh manna from heaven will come again today. There will be bread in plenty, God's manna stretching across the plain for all to share in. Friends, our hopeful generosity comes from on high. Live in that hope. Amen. share our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, my friends. I'd just like to tell you a little bit about my friend, who uh, I was talking to uh, the other day. She works for the public health department. And uh, she was talking about the very long hours up and getting home at 6, 7, even 8 o'clock at night, working weekends, just trying to deal with all that the health department does as far as containing this pandemic. And she talked about how important it was when especially she had people that were difficult, who didn't want to quarantine or were having difficult understanding the, the virus, how just very important it was to take the time to really explain 
why it's so important for the community, for the community to try to contain this disease and to always go back to the facts and what we know about the disease. But she also talked about how the toll it has taken on the staff at the health department. So I just ask all of you to keep the good nurses and all the good people at the health department in your prayers because they're certainly working very, very hard to um, help this community. And so I ask you to uh, join with me today, united with the saints of, of every time and place. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Dear God, this pandemic, during this pandemic, restore our sense of belonging and community. Help us to connect with others in meaningful and positive ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open our eyes to your goodness and salvation. It's easy to feel helpless and depressed. Give us strength to overcome these self-defeating thoughts. Move us forward each day to be a positive force in our community, with our families and with everyone we interact with. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us to see the beauty in the world, the dazzling display of the fall colors, but also the selfless people in the world who make our communities better. Nurses, doctors, teachers, police officers, farmers, social workers, and anyone who is working day in and day out in difficult and challenging jobs. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your blessings upon our church. Even though we are unable to gather on Sunday mornings, help us to reach out to each other in meaningful ways. We ask your blessings on all the missions we continue to pursue at Feed My People Food Bank, Beacon House, The Quilters, Community Table, and Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The politics in our country is more divided and ugly than ever before. Give us patience and wisdom, Lord, to be respectful and civil to those we most disagree with. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, comfort all who mourn. Bring healing to the sick and give hope to all who struggle in their daily lives. Help us to reach out to all in need in this congregation and in our community. Today we ask your healing presence be with Mary Hewitt, Rebecca Ching, Elaine Root, and Gerald Brown. We pray for Everett Seeley, Deb Adams, Betty Fonis, and Jim Hunk. Keep in your prayers Joanne and Maynard Fonis, Sherwin Stewart, Tim Knudsen, Joanne Knudsen, and Betty Powers. And we pray for Tom and Kate Howard, Shelley Knudsen, and Dick Schumann. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing our final hymn.
Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.